That's still going to love us. That's right. Thank you, Lord, that you always love us. Thank you, thank you, Lord, that you always love us. You never stop loving us. Even when we're really stupid. Even when we're really stupid, he loves us. We can't be so stupid he doesn't love us. Man. I can see him and St. Peter. Do you see what she did? <laughs> She's done that 14 times, and you think she'll learn by now. <laughs> Is that girl ever gonna learn? It was it was total freedom to me. Missy's the one that told me, <laughs> time, you know, that she, she she had been working with somebody. I'd been working with somebody. We took them to a women's event. I can't remember what happened to both of them, but neither one of the women that came with us, one of them ended up, I know, in the bathroom almost the whole thing, and uh, the other one wasn't paying any more attention than the man in the moon and. Missy and I both were pretty early in our walk, you know, and our hearts yeah, were on fire and we were wanting yeah. to, we were wanting to help, you know, and so, <laughs> you know, we parted ways since we live in opposite states and different states and we parted ways and so we got back together later and said, you know, did you pray? Yeah, did you pray? Yeah, and Missy says, you know, God spoke to me and he said, you know what he told me? He, he didn't look down and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that girl went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the service and you know that freedom of knowing yeah. that w nothing we do surprises our father and good morning yeah. by the way I know you guys are all catching this it's conversation we're having at the at the table but nothing we do surprises him you know it, it's not that he didn't know in advance that we were going to do what we do oh you know here it was we were praying for somebody else but it set me free <laughs> It set me free. <laughs> good morning, uh, Bandy. It's sure good to see you this morning. Hi, Mom. I get to see you on, and Sandy's watching with us, and my Uncle Keith's on, and my favorite nep uh, nephew, my favorite niece, Abby Joe's with us. I was talking about your mama, Abby Joe, and my brother, Randy. He's on with us a lot. And Eileen, good morning. Hugs to you, Eileen, every morning gives me a hug and tells me she loves me. I love it. <laughs> Joni. Hi, Joni. I went to high school with Joni. She's somebody I looked up to big time, big time. I thought Joni was the best thing since sliced bread. She was so beautiful and very talented and gifted, very smart. Amber's on with us. Hi, Amber. Hi, Mark. Uh, oh, Missy heard me talking about her. Mm, her ears Missy's on. <laughs> <laughs> Missy has said many, many things to me that has set my heart free. <laughs> That's why the fellowship that God gives us is so important. Good morning, Linda. We are here on this rainy morning in Oklahoma, uh, April the 23rd of 2019, reading in Judges. We moved into the Judges. And um, <clears throat> talks about after the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, which tribe should go first to attack the Canaanites? So again, a little bit of background is <clears throat> Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land. Anytime you read about the land in the Old Testament, it represents the promise that God's given you, the promise that he's taking care of your kids, the promise that He'll take care of your finances. The promise that he'll equip you to do that new job you just uh, uh, got promoted into. The promise that when you don't know what to do, he'll show you what to do. The promise that he's a light into your path and he guides your steps. He numbers your steps. He guides your, your way. Whatever the promise is that he's given you, <clears throat> um, that's what's represented by this promised land. So that was the physical promise that they had been given. So they're over here, but God didn't tell them when they entered the land flowing with milk and honey, they got to retire and they didn't have to plant crops and they didn't have to wage war and they didn't have to drive out the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the whatever the tights are. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't tell them that. He didn't tell them it was going to be easy. He told them that the land was flowing with milk and honey, and that he would always be with them. One of the scriptures today is uh, Judges 2.1. I said, I would never break my covenant with you, God told them in today's reading. And so 
they're, they're over here and now they have work to do. See, God's not going to leave us idle. Idle hands is the devil's, idle hands is the devil's play, playground. Idleness is not good. Isolation is not good. Um, it opens the door for those things that are not of God. Um, and so they had work to do. And the work was to attack and drive out the ites, the tites, the ites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the whatever. And as the last few days, as we've been reading about the Israelites entering into the promised land, getting exactly what we want, uh, what they wanted, then I'm reminded of when, oh my Lord, I, I, I want a baby so bad, I want a baby so bad. And so we have a baby or two or three, and then about five months in, when all you're getting is about two and three hours of sleep at night, you're thinking, oh, take this baby back, or take those babies back. Or, oh, I, I should be the one promoted. It's me, it's me, it's me. I, I, want, I want to get promoted. And then all of a sudden, the level of responsibility that comes with those promotions, promotions come upon you, and you're thinking, oh, I'm in over my head. Or, you know, I, Lord, if you'll just give me a second job, I'll pay off all my bills. And then just like that new, new mother, uh, two jobs, double the hours, double the work, six weeks in, you're so exhausted, you don't think you can go to either job. And then both jobs are at jeopardy. I could go on and on and on. What is it that you've been praying for? What is it you've been believing for? This is what the message has been over and over and over again, including today's reading. We want what we want. And especially these days, it seems, and I'm sure it's always been this way. There's nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. But we want what we want. We want it now. And then when we get our promises, we, we don't even know how to accept the blessings of God in our life. I wonder, and I think one of my biggest surprises when I cross over is going to be the knowing I think I'm going to have, <laughs> you know, and I've heard this said, it's just symbolic. So just go with me. I don't believe this is really what's going to happen. But, you know, St. Peter walks me into this room and here's all these doors. And he, and he one by one goes by and says, well, you remember when that blessing came upon you? You know, you entered in a little bit, but look at all the things you left behind. And he shuts the door. You didn't get those blessings. And he goes to that door. And he says, remember when you wanted to be a mother so bad and you didn't know how to walk in that and all the blessings that was waiting for you if you had just called on the Lord to help you with that blessing. And the door by door by door by door is all of the blessings that I didn't know how to walk into and accept. And that's what I see. I mean, throughout this reading, it says that they attacked, but they didn't quite drive them out. And I, ha I have to stop and wonder, why didn't they just quite drive it out? I mean, I just read it. I said I would never break my covenant with you. God says in, in Joshua, how many times does he say, fear not, for I will be with you? I mean, God, God was with them. God told them they had to go in and drive out the people of the land and, and take possession of the land and possess it. But they had a hard time possessing the land, which is the promise, which is the blessing. And we do the same thing. I mean, we, we self-sabotage. We, we, we don't know how to rest in the peace that God's given us. I mean, for crying out loud, heaven forbid there should be silence in the house because we'll go turn the television on. How can you really fully grasp God's peace when you can't even allow a silence? And, and that, that's so significant to me because I've lived that life. I, you've heard me say it. Uh, there was a time in my life I had a radio blaring 24 hours a day, seven days a week because I couldn't stand the silence. I mean, to sit and listen to it rain, I'm so grateful that today I'm at a place that literally I could walk out on that porch and sit and listen to the rain. There was a time that I had to have somebody with me all the time because I wasn't at peace with myself. 
but we don't even know how to possess the land he's given us to appreciate the blessings. You know, the conversation this morning come about because of some difficulties in a family situation. No surprises, no surprises. And I love it that this particular family, you know, parents was able to say, teenagers, no surprises, no surprises. Instead of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh, I, oh, you know what? God's with us. God is with us. I don't care what is going on in your life, how bad it is. And I know there's people on here that's listening today that has gone through way more horrible things than I've ever experienced. The loss of a child, the, the, the loss of somebody extremely close, and, and the list goes on and on. I just know the promises in here is that he never leaves us, he never forsakes us. And what if, what if today, through the readings that we've had the last few days, we, we rise up in an awareness that we ourselves sometimes have trouble possessing the land, accepting the blessings. I, you know, I feel like this year's reading has brought me to a greater awareness of just how blessed I am. And my life's not perfect. And I don't make all the right decisions. You know, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, God's calling me to a deeper level of reading his word and that, boy, I wanted to step into that. And I do, but you know what? I haven't. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, I'm not all that in a bag of rocks. I, I know he is. I know there's blessings. I know that there will be more blessings behind that door and behind that door when I obey and I come in last night at eight o'clock. What if last night at eight o'clock when I stopped working, <clears throat> instead of coming in and sitting in my easy chair, what if I'd have just picked up my Bible for 30 extra minutes? I wonder what blessing what revelation I might have gotten by doing that. See, that's just an, I mean, it's what I'm talking about. What I'm seeing is they attacked the people, but they didn't drive them out. And then they compromised and just allowed them to live with them. Well, and then on top of that, they made them slaves. You know, I've often wondered, I think the definition of slaves in Old Testament times was different than the definition of slaves and the image that we have in America of our slaves. Because all I've really got until I started reading the Bible about slaves is, is the horrible things we did to slaves in America. And it's a, it's, it makes my skin crawl. I, I just almost can't even fathom that we treated the people the way so many of the stories goes in the way people were treated. And I, I can't help believe that that's not my father's heart. Now, slaves to the point that I have to have a job and, and I dedicate my service to you in exchange for a place to live, food to feed my family, but not the oppression and mistreatment. And I don't know, I'm telling you, I'm, this is coming to me as I sit here, so I've not thought this out. I'm. I'm just telling you, sitting here in my chair right now, this moment, I have a hard time believing that, that slavery is my father's best for anybody. Because when he speaks about slavery in here to me, he's telling me, don't be a slave to death. Don't be a slave to sin. Don't be a slave to lustful desires. Don't, all of those things make a slave. So when they were supposed to drive them out and they didn't drive them out, and they made them slaves, I believe they opened the door for not good things. And I believe they definitely blocked blessings that was theirs. I, I don't know. I told, I've told y'all from the beginning, I'm not a theologian. I haven't, I've not been to Bible college. <clears throat> In my heart of hearts where I stand today, I don't believe my father thinks slavery is the best. I don't believe that's my father's best at all. Certainly not slavery where we mistreat people but they made them slaves. Uh, to me, it's almost piling one wrong on top of another when all that was offered to them, if they would have obeyed, was blessings and more and more blessings. I mean, we, we read about the list of cities. This, this parcel of land had this city and that city and that city. 
as we talked about, the infrastructure was already there. The running water was up. The water source, I guess, because they didn't have running water back then, but the water source was there. The, the methodology to feed people, the, all they had to do was obey. And you know what? Today, all we have to do is obey. All we have to do is obey. And, and then we get into to Luke, and it starts talking about some of the things we should do. Uh, verse 34, watch out. Don't walk your, let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness. Now, isn't it interesting that in this sentence in the Bible, he, he throws in, along with carousing and drunkenness, he throws in and by the worries of this life. Watch out. It's a warning for us. Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. You know, that's why we read. It's not because I'm not free to do whatever. I'm free to worry myself to death if that's what I choose to do. I'm free. I'm free to drink whatever I want to drink. And I'm free to carouse if I want to carouse. But there's consequences. And, and once again, I see that as the image of here's the blessing of the freedom of your true salvation. The ultimate lamb has already paid the ultimate price for all. We are all now living in the kingdom of God. We are one. We're one with our father. We're one with our creator. We're one with each other. We're one with his creation. We're one. And yet I choose to worry myself to death instead of pressing and praying, like, Lord, take this from me. Show me. Build my faith, Father. And, and, and I choose to get drunk instead of, you know, well, how do I get drunk? Well, I have to take the first drink before I get drunk. Or I choose to carouse. How does the carousing come about? It comes with that first thought. That first thought. I, I've, I've mentioned this to you guys before, but Carrie and I was watching a show one day, and it was about a predator who, who preyed on young, young girls that ended up killing them and dismembering them. It was like a dateline. It was a true story. And Carrie and I sat there and we talked about it and said, how did it ever get to the point that somebody would want to, first of all, do the sexual things they do to these little girls and then to kill them? And then it, you know, the sexual acts wasn't enough. It didn't quench their thirst. And so then the killing didn't quench their thirst. And then it led to dismemberment of several before they caught him. How, how did it ever get to that point? How did it get to the point of carousing? How did it get to the point that you would send uh, pictures of your naked self to somebody over a text message? How, how would it get to that point? It starts with a thought. One little teeny tiny thought. That's why the Bible tells us to take our thoughts captive, to cast them down. It's why it's so important that we pray on a regular basis, that we read on a regular basis, and that we listen to what he says, because this book renews our mind. See, I'm not even looking at my blessings the same way I was before this year. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing my hesitation in accepting the goodness of God in my life. I mean, for crying out loud, I lived in a beautiful home for eight months before I truly could accept the fact that this was really God's blessing for me. That struggle was real. Uh, hmm, that's what I got out of today's reading. And, then, and I want to move into the Psalms because if you, if you have bad nightmares if you have children or grandchildren that have bad nightmares i highly recommend that you memorize psalms 91 if fear overcomes you in any way shape or form you have fear about your health you have fear about your children about your grandchildren you've got fear about finances you've got fear about the economy you've got fear about terrorism you've got fear about germs you've got fear about anything, anything, you cannot recite Psalms 91 too many times. 
I just want to read what's in today's reading, and I'll end with that today. Psalms 91.1, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you. Are you getting this? Are you hearing this? I want to say that again. He will rescue you from every trap. Didn't say every trap except the one you set for yourself. It says he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Your young one has just had a terrible nightmare and, he's, and he or she's scared to go back to sleep and you read this to him and you tell him this is God speaking to him. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousands are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. You know, people, I tell people all the time when they walk into this sanctuary, they walk into a blessed home and that, that there's no demons allowed in here. They can't come within a thousand foot radius, thousand mile radius of this home. This is God's home. He dwells here. The most high dwells in this home. This is a place of safety. It's a sanctuary. People walk in and they feel the difference because I stand on this promise that no evil will conquer me or mine and no plague will come near this home, my home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. I just recently had a dear friend tell me to open my eyes because there were angels in my home, and I immediately knew where two of them were <laughs> every day. And they haven't left from the time she mentioned that to me. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Do you believe that? I mean, why do we believe that as I get older, I have to hurt? Why do I believe that as I get older, my eyes have to dim? Why do I believe that arthritis has to set in? Why do I believe that I have to get diabetes because uh, my family has a history? Why do I believe when the truth is they will hold you up with their hands and you won't even hurt your foot on a stone? You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. Are you having a hard time today loving him? Do you know I've had to bow my head many times and say, Father, put your love in my heart because I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Oh, God, please teach me how to love you. Show me how to love you. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. I, I don't know how to trust him the way he wants me to trust him. I have to submit and I have to cast my cares. I have to say, this child is yours. This fear is yours. I, I give that fear to you. Fear of thunder and lightning, Father, I give that to you. Fear of storms, I give that to you. Fear of driving on the highways, I give that to you. Show me how to trust you as I go about my daily life. When they call on me, I will answer. Boy, what a promise. That's why I say God hears every one of my prayers and he answers every one of my prayers. I stand on this. I can find you places over and over and over again that he says, you have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. When they call on me, I will answer. I believe with everything in me. 
He hears every prayer we pray and he answers every prayer. We just may not, just as they had trouble coming in and possessing the land, the blessings, they, they couldn't even see it as a blessing because they didn't quite want to drive out the Canaanites. They'd rather make them slaves. See, that's how come we can believe he didn't answer my prayer today. I didn't get an instant answer. I, 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 the answer came, but I couldn't see it because I didn't want to drive out the Canaanites. I didn't want to go to war. Oh, no. Oh, heaven forbid I have to do something. I want God to do it all. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. Write that down. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Man, that is one of my most favorite books in this entire Bible. I can't read it enough. My faith is made stronger every time I read it. Hide this word in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. Proverbs 13, 24 and 25. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. It doesn't get any more black and white than that. There is no debate. It, if you believe in the word, if you believe in God and you believe his word, those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. See, it's not easy to discipline them. In the beginning, it's not easy. But overall, your life will be so much better because you'll have well-behaved children just because you take the time in the early years to discipline to get them under control. You know, my early years with Carrie Dawn was tough. It was tough. There was a rebellion in my teenage daughter, like all teenagers have. But you know, today, all I have to do is give Carrie a look. She's got a reverential fear for me. And if you know Carrie Dawn, you know she loves me. And I love her. But it didn't come because I spared the rod with Carrie Dawn. I loved her enough to take the time in the beginning to do what it takes so that she can be secure in herself. Children that are not disciplined, has no, they have no security for their safety. They live in a constant state of fear. Because, why? Here's our answer. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. The godly eat to their heart's content, but the belly, the belly of the wicked goes hungry. These are words to live by. This is how we know how to navigate our world. I mean, how many days do I open it? And I, I, again, I know I repeat myself, but we have new people that come on all the time. They put this reading plan together in the 80s. I've been reading it to the best of my recollection for about 17 years, and it never ceases to amaze me how on April the 23rd, 2019, these words are exactly the words I needed today. Today. I know these were good words for Montana today. It's exactly what Montana did need to hear today. Today. How is that? It's because it's God's word. It's what he's been speaking to us anyway. It just how happens that where we're at in life right now today, lines up with what he's been speaking to us, if we could just hear. But when we read, it comes alive. The, the, it's the rhema word that comes alive. It's not the written word that comes alive. It's the rhema word that comes alive because there's not one thing in here that he hasn't already been speaking to us. He just knew we'd struggle. He knew we'd have trouble. Is that, Lord, is that your voice or is it enough or another voice? Is it is it my flesh or is it you? And so he wrote it down. And he said, when you feel like picking up your child and spanking them, I'll give you permission. And if you don't believe me, I'll write it down for you. Nothing in here says we can abuse our children. Everything in balance. This book will tell you everything in balance. We serve a balanced God. We serve a God of excellence. And he put the spirit of excellence in us. When you live your life knowing that his spirit of excellence is on the inside of you, you won't settle for less. That's why when Carrie Dawn acts contrary 
to the excellent spirit in her, I point her right back to that spirit. That's not who you are. The reason we don't do that, Carrie, is because that's not who you are. That's not who lives on the inside of you. Hmm. Wish I'd have known to do that with my other four boys I raised. <laughs> but I wasn't reading the word back then like I am today either. I love you guys. Have a terrific Tuesday. We'll talk again tomorrow.